On today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm going to be creating a fun fantasy map using the default tools in Adobe After Effects, as well as cool assets that I find from today's sponsor, Envato Elements. With a subscription to Envato Elements, you get unlimited access to over 56 million assets. These include fonts, music tracks, graphic templates, vectors, PSDs, textures, video templates, Adobe templates, 3D objects, even WordPress themes. They offer a nice and clean, simple, lifetime commercial license, which is good even after your subscription ends. Following the link in the video description is going to give you 50% off when you select an annual subscription, which will give you access to everything on the site for less than $20 a month. Seriously, go check it out. Okay, I'm inside of Adobe After Effects here, and for the first step, I want to create the boundaries of my little country, and I'm actually creating an island. So I'm going to grab the pin tool, and I'm going to set the fill to solid color. doesn't matter what color it is right now. I'm gonna set the stroke to solid color, and I'll change the color to a black, and I'll set the brightness to like 10%, and I'll set the stroke amount to 15 pixels. And since that stroke is black, I won't be able to see it on this uh, composition background, so I'm gonna go to the composition settings and just change the color to a lighter color. Okay, and now I'm just gonna start to draw out the shape or the boundary of my little island here. Okay, that's looking good. And I want there to be like a little lake in the center. And then I want there to be another small secondary island out here somewhere. I'm always afraid it's gonna look like something naughty. <laughs> okay, now if I open up the shape layer, I just wanna stay organized here. Um, so under contents, I have three shape elements that I've created. I have my big island here, which is shape one. I'm gonna move that to the top and I'm gonna call that big island. And then I have shape two, which is that lake that I created. These are groups of shape elements. So I want to make sure that I don't accidentally place them in different groups with each other or that I don't want to put one group in the other because that would mess things up. So I'll call this one lake and then I'll call this one small island. Now what I want to do is I want to take the lake and um, you punch out a hole of my big island. So I am in fact going to select both of these shape groups and group them. And with that group selected, I'm going to add a Merge Paths uh, animator tool here. And then I'm going to go to the Merge Paths mode and just subtract. And I need to make sure that the big island uh, group is above the lake. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. See, if I bring the lake over top here, it just gets all wonky. So be careful with your shape groups. They, get, um, they can get a little weird. Okay, so... Now you can see I've got these general shapes. It looks terrible. <laughs> so I need to start to make it look a little bit better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of make the edges, uh, the boundary look a little bit more dynamic. I'm gonna grab the contents here, go to add, wiggle paths. Now wiggle paths is an actual animator that um, if you look at the parameters here, it has a wiggle rate per second. I'm gonna set that to zero. I want it to be static. And then I can go through here and just make adjustments to this until I get a look that I like. Right now it's a little too wiggly. So I'm gonna bring up the size, something like 25. I'll bring down the detail, That's it's too detailed. So I'm gonna bring that down to three, it's starting to look a little better, but the points are set to corner. I'm gonna bring that down to smooth. And now we're getting somewhere that looks um, quite a bit better, actually pretty close now. One weird thing about wiggle paths that I found out recently, it's a very wonky animator. If you duplicate a shape element that has a wiggle pass, it automatically changes uh, the wiggle. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I just grab this layer and I duplicate it a bunch of times, check out the path. It's starting to get all crazy and that's because every time I duplicate it, it changes, um, it's like the random seed is being adjusted. So if you open this up and go back to the wiggle paths, there's an actual random seed parameter. If you set that to anything but zero, it'll be fine. Then you can come over here and you can duplicate it a bunch of times and that path is gonna stay locked. So that's very important if I are creating the borders of this, fan it's not very important because it's a fantasy map. But if I were creating a map that was important, um, I would wanna make sure that these borders I create need to stay in place. For this next step, I'm going to uh, actually duplicate this to create coastlines. So first, let me just name this and we're gonna call this Boone Island. I know very creative, right? But we're gonna call it Boone Island in French, so Ile de Boone. I'm gonna duplicate this now, and I'll rename this coastline, and I'm gonna turn off the fill of this one, so we just have the stroke, and now I'm gonna go back down to contents, add another animator, and you see I'm selecting contents. It's very important where you select when you're adding new animators, because things can get crazy, 
and confusing really fast, FYI. So I'm gonna add a, what am I gonna add? I'm gonna add an offset paths. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna allow me to, boop, add a cool little coastline border. Oh, so cool, oh, I love it. Now I just want to um, bring down the width of this, 10, and now I got a cool little coastline there, check that out. And if I duplicate it again, I'll still have this offset. I can offset it again. Okay, I've got coastline two. I'm gonna bring this one down to like seven and maybe like one more. Offset the paths of this one and bring this down to four. So now we've got this kind of cool looking coastline. Very, very cool. I think I'm gonna do a whole tutorial on like creating different looking coastlines, how the ocean is visualized. Cause this is very, very cool. And you can get these to intersect. You can animate them. Check out that tutorial on the way at some point in the future. Okay, so I've got the coastline, um, and now I wanna start to really roughen up the edges even more. But before I do that, I wanna find a background texture because when I start roughening up the edges, I wanna make sure that the composite is looking good as I go through the process. So I'm gonna go find a texture at Envato Elements. First, I'm gonna go to graphics here so I can filter by graphics, and then I'm gonna search for old paper and right here, old and vintage isolated paper. And one way to stay organized, um, if you're going through and you're collecting a bunch of assets on Envato, because they're all, once you have a subscription, you can download unlimited elements. So I find myself downloading a bunch of stuff and then trying different stuff out. So I like to use these collections. You can add this to a collection. I have a collection called Fantasy Map. And then when you go and look at your collections here, you can see everything uh, nice and neat and organized. So I'm gonna download the vintage paper and bring them into my project here. And then I'm gonna go grab one of these. Let's grab uh, vintage paper three. I'll right click on it, transform, and fit to comp width. Then I'm gonna lock that off. Okay, so now I've got this texture here. So one way uh, right away that I can blend this in is I can set this to multiply our island. And that's gonna bring some of that texture through darken it up a little bit. Now I want to focus on these corners because there are these edges because they're just looking way too sharp, way too digital. So for that, I'm going to grab this and we'll, we'll focus on this inner border first. So let's just turn off the coastlines actually. And uh, we'll turn off path visibility. Now I'm going to add uh, the effect roughen edges, our old friend roughen edges. And I'm going to start to bump up the border here. And all I'm trying to do is create like a, a border or a stroke that has like variable width. So it's not all the same width. And it's important that I have the resolution set to full here. I want this to, to give off like a, the, everything I'm trying to achieve here is that is like hand drawn or hand created. So, you, so obviously it doesn't look hand drawn when that stroke is a perfect width all the way around. So it's already looking much better. If I turn off rough and edges, that's before. That's after. I can bump it up you know, quite a bit more to really lose some of the stroke. I can change the scale here. There's just a bunch of different stuff that you can do. And there's even different types of um, edges. So I can switch this to rough and color, and it's going to give me this little color here. Very, very nice. I can change that color with the color picker. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the coastline. So I'll copy rough and edges and then paste it on the coastline. And you'll notice right away I lose the coastline. That's because the border is just way too thick for that one. So I'm gonna to start to pull it back. And there we go, right away. That one's looking better. I'm just gonna go with that. This is Otherwise, this is gonna be a five hour tutorial if I waste all my time on coastlines. And for the last one. And that, what's really cool about these uh, rough and edges is that you can animate those suckers and make it look like, you know, I can animate the amount of the offset path and then have those fade away to, to create a really good looking um, water animation, really subtle, nice looking animation. So now that that's all roughened in, I could go ahead and select all this, Control Shift C to pre-compose it and we'll call it Island. And then you see right away we lose that blend mode. So what I can do is I can collapse the transformations to make sure that all stays nice and good. Then I can scale it down a little, you know, move it around. Um, and one other thing you notice that gets wonky, pre After Effects is just wonky, wonky donkey. As I scale it down, it messes up that wiggle pass. So let me undo that. I'm gonna turn off collapse transformations, and then I'm just gonna do the blend mode here with my comp. And now if I scale it down, those wiggle paths should stay intact. There we go. Oh boy, After Effects is complicated. Okay, I called it island, but it's Yildabun. 
Okay, so I've got my base map here and my base texture. Now I'm ready to go to Envato Elements and really find some cool stuff to add to this map. So I've written down here a list of fictional names of places that I've created that I want to put on the map, which has led me to a list of elements that I've created that I want to download from Envato. And I want all these elements to have a hand-drawn look. Um, so that'll be one, uh, lead me to some of the keywords that I need to search for, like hand-drawn, ink, sketch. I'm looking for things like mountains, lakes, trees, coat of arms, castles, skulls, animals, mythical creatures, nautical-themed elements. So under graphics, I'm just going to do hand-drawn nature and see what comes up here. So right here, we have some really cool stuff. These first two are really good. Nature 31 hand-drawn elements. So I can see mountains here. I see trees. I see clouds. And of course, with these mountains, I'm going to want to group them. So let me just go ahead and add this to my collection, fantasy map. Let me do hand-drawn mountain. Now I can see a lot of these are from the same artist, which would be good to kind of keep a nice theme going. If I'm going to use a bunch of different elements, it might be good to have it all from the same artist. So it looks kind of similar. Now I'm going to go through this list and mark these off as I get them. So mountain, trees, coat of arms. And I'm going to get a font that looks good here. So I'm just going to search for maybe fantasy. Ah, this one's looking good. Ooh, very nice. Okay, I'm going to add that to my collection. So these graphics come kind of differently. A lot of them come as EPS or Adobe Illustrator files. Some of them, they have uh, PNGs that you can just drag and drop in. But I'm going to be working with a tool called Overlord, which allows you to work easily with vector files inside of Illustrator. You can essentially select something and bring it straight over into After Effects. So that's a great way to work. If you want to check out that plugin um, or that extension, follow my link in the, uh, in the video description. It's really great. The first thing I think I should do is probably add some labels here and then I can start to add some of the elements to these locations. So, and I've got the Mythshire, the new font here. So let me go ahead and name the map. Let's give it a proper name up here and place this. And I wanna do the same thing to this text. It already looks good, but I'm gonna rough, go ahead and roughen the edges for this. So it'll make it blend in a little bit better. And I'm gonna use that roughen color. Ooh, and then right away you can see it already looks pretty darn good. Now, let's see, uh, right in the middle here, we're gonna have my castle. So I'll call it Chateau Boon. Just do a quick little overlay. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. Let's go over here. And this will be the island of the mother-in-law, Ile de la Belle Mer. Ooh. And you know, to make this, uh, pop a little more, you can just duplicate it when it has that uh, overlay on it. Right here, we'll have the Bay of Baguettes. The Forgotten Forest. This will be the land of the ex-boyfriend. Very annoying place. Magic Mountains, so original. Let's see if I can go ahead and pre-calm these text elements all right now we can start to place some of these elements so okay let's focus on the Ile de la belle mer Ooh, scary place this is where you go and a woman lives here that just talks to you and never stops talking until you die i think this is perfect for the skull Dun -dun 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 -dun. let's try an overlay blend that's looking pretty good. Okay, so this is the hand-drawn mountains trees. Let's go back here and see if they have hand-drawn mountain trees. Okay, so they do have PNGs of these. I'm not too clear on whether it's like faster for After Effects to handle a PNG with transparency or if I should use Overlord to send something from Illustrator to After Effects. If you happen to know the answer, let me know. Because when you, when I grab something like this and you zoom in and you look at all of the actual, the actual vertices, it's crazy. And I imagine that computing for that is gonna be a lot. So if I just grab these instead, it, uh, it might be easier. So let me just grab um, this PNG, drag it and drop it over here. So uh, this will be the Forgotten Forest, so. Bring this over here, something like right here, overlay. Let's 
So I can go back here and, for example, just grab this mountain and push it straight to After Effects, and that's gonna send it as a shape element. And with these, it's pretty easy if you wanna, the mountains still look good, even if you kind of squish them and rescale them like that, vertically and horizontally, still look, uh, still hold up. Okay, so now I've got this one, I've got it as a PNG, I can bring it straight into my graphics folder, and I don't know if this one's gonna work, I might have to do quite a bit here. So this will be Chateau Boone, this is my castle, right on the lake, oh yeah. So obviously this isn't fitting in with the theme here, so I could go in and uh, let's maybe add a tint to it, and let's map. Let's kind of reverse these colors here. I could do a, I could do a little silhouette like that. Okay, that's not too bad. And then I could come back here, grab one of these dragons. Wow, these are cool. Let me zoom in here. And see, look at that. That doesn't have many points. Whoever made this one is a master. See, look how quickly that transferred over. Okay, so over here in the land of the ex-boyfriend, let's say that many of the queen's ex-boyfriends are coming over on ship to visit her. You know how it goes. So let's say they're all coming over by ship. So we got this ship here. Whoa, that's way too big. Here come these ex-boyfriend pirates. And then there's another ship here. Nighty night ex-boyfriend. Actually, this won't be land of ex-boyfriend. Let's change that. So let's go down to text. And let's just call this port, port ex-boyfriend. Okay, I'm gonna jump in and add a bunch more elements and then I will come back. And you know what, I need to add a river here. So what I can do is I'm just gonna grab my pen tool and Set a stroke to like 10. And then I'm just gonna say that this starts, let's say that this starts in the mountains here. And it's gonna go straight through here and maybe wind through the forest a little bit. And then we want it to pop out here. Okay, I'm gonna rename it River. So we can duplicate Ile Boon. And then we're gonna use that as an alpha mat for the river, and then we need to take this river and we're gonna add our old friend, Wiggle Paths. Okay, Wiggle Paths, and this is gonna make it more of a river. So now I can come to here, let's add less detail, smooth it out. Actually, we want like a detail of three, and then we can really make this river turn. No, let's, no, I want this river to go crazy here. So we want like eight, how about that? Yeah, that's a cool river. Starting in the mountains. Now let's go play with the stroke here. So we need to go to taper. So it's going to end wider than it starts. So I guess it starts, is that right? And now we're gonna take these two and we definitely wanna put them we definitely want the river to be underneath everything, including the text elements. Now look at that, you see how our river's freaking out? That's, that is once again having to do with that wiggle paths uh, and it's the random seed that keeps getting hit. So if I set it to anything but zero, it's gonna fix it, I think. Let's try to move it now again. Yeah, that's so strange. I just found the answer to that on Reddit. Um, very, very strange. Okay, now there's this really cool graphic, these coat of arms. Let me see if I can find a cool one. A cool one, they're all cool. But I thought there was one with like a little fox on it. Certainly looks like one. I like this one. I don't know what it says, but let's go ahead and export selection. Now, I really need to try to wrap things up here because I could just keep modifying and modifying this map to my heart's content, but I'm gonna try to finish things up here. So I'm gonna grab all of these elements here and I'm gonna pre-comp them. Make sure I collapse transformations there. 
Now I'm going to scale it down ever so slightly so I can add a border. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, set the stroke to something like 22, and then I'm just going to double click and that's going to add this border here. And all I need to do is scale it down a little bit. So now I got this cool little border on my map. I'll call this border and I'm going to add a rough and edges or maybe something like 18. I'm going to set the blend mode to overlay. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. And I don't know why, but this text here is sticking out a little too much for me. So I'm going to jump back down here into the pre-comp and into the text elements. I'm going to look down here and it looks like the blending mode is set to multiply. I'm going to switch that to overlay. And then just to make that pop, I'm going to duplicate it. And if we go back here, okay, that's looking a little bit better. Okay, so I found this vintage charts uh, graphic here, some really cool elements. So I'm gonna grab some of those from my project and I'm gonna go over here and you know, this project is really a mess, but I don't like feel like cleaning it up right now, so that's that. Now I'm gonna go over and grab this one really cool chart. I am going to scale this thing up and I got this nice space down here in the bottom left corner, so let's move that right to here. Scale it up to something like this. And I'm going to switch the blend mode to overlay, bring it right down here. And now to better uh, blend this in, I'm going to duplicate our main pre-comp here, bring it above the chart, the nautical chart. Let's call this nautical chart. And then I'm going to set this to an alpha mat so that it's, I'm sorry, I'm going to set this to an alpha inverted mat so it doesn't go over our island. Maybe bring the opacity 45. And I'm going to need to move that little boat there. And then maybe even add a little bit of a blur, just ever so slightly, so it doesn't draw too much attention away from our map. And now I'm going to add, um, let me add an adjustment layer on top, and this will be for a vignette as well as some noise. So let's add CC vignette, and the default settings are kind of okay. And I'm gonna add some noise, and we'll set the noise to 10%. Okay, looking pretty cool. One of the last things I want to do is add some more texture to the top. And I think some watercolor textures would be great. So let me take a look here. Um, this is looking pretty cool. So I'm just going to drop this on the top. So I'll download these. Okay, I'm going to grab a really dark one and I'm just going to drop it on top of everything except for the vignette and noise. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tent because I want it to be like proper grayscale. And then I'm going to set the blend mode to what? What am I going to set the blend mode to? Let's try uh, soft light. Ooh, that's looking pretty cool. But I just need to bring the opacity down now. And that definitely gives it a little bit more of a cool look. Let's do a quick before and after with this watercolor texture. And I'm going to actually rename this watercolor texture. So after, before, after, before, after. I can make that pretty strong if I want. Okay, for the last two steps, I'm gonna animate just a few of these elements. Nothing too crazy, I just wanna animate this coastline. If I had a lot of time, I could really come in here and like use the puppet pen tool to animate the wings of this dragon, have it flying around, maybe have some fire going on. I could maybe have these trees swaying. There's a bunch of little subtle stuff I could do. I could animate these ships, of course. And then once I've got the animations done, I'm gonna add some music. All right, first I'll animate this coastline. I'm gonna dive down in to this pre-comp here. And I'm going to turn off two of the coastline layers here. So let's just forget about these all together and let's focus on just the one. And then we can duplicate it. So for this coastline, I'm going to animate two parameters. So over the course of two seconds, I want to do the border of the roughened edges as well as the offset path amount. So add a keyframe here. Now, this is the end point, two seconds. So I'm going to bring this way out, like 250. Okay, so this will be our ending point. And I want the border to fade out. So you can see as I bring this border up, it kind of fades away. So let's bring it to like 35 so it goes all the way out. Okay, so we have our two keyframes here. Now we'll go back to the beginning. We can have it start at eight and offset of zero. So let's see what this does here. 
Okay, so it's fading out way too fast, so I need to go to like one and a half seconds here and change the rough and edges to like uh, 13. And then it'll fade out real quick. And then I can add a quick little curves on this so it shoots out faster and then fades out. Now another thing that's kind of annoying me that I don't really like the look of is that the way these are intersecting with each other, I want these to merge. So that's simple enough. I'm going to open up the contents here and with contents selected, I'm gonna to go to add merge paths and that will automatically merge those and now you can see that's the deal. So that's because that's set to add. Okay, now if I hit U, you can see this is a two second animation and I wanna simply loop these. So I'll alt click on amount and type up loop, loop out, and then I'll just copy this, alt click and paste on here. So now these will both loop out endlessly. Okay, so that's looping out, looks pretty cool, but I want there to be more. So I'm gonna have this kind of stagger. So I'll duplicate it twice I want one to already, so that this loops, I'll have one start off screen. So I'll go to the halfway point here, which is one second. I'm gonna trim one down like this and then push it to the beginning here. So it'll start like this. So now if we look at the keyframes of all of them here, you can see that this one's already started halfway through. This one starts here at the playhead and then this one starts at the end of this one. Actually, do I need to do it like that? I think that's the right way. And then we can see our final map animation. Okay, it looks good, but the, um, the coastline is animating out just a little too far, so I'm gonna pull that back just a little bit. And then here is the final final. Okay, so there you have it, there's my fantasy map. I know there's not much animation here, but I'm almost at the 30 minute mark, so I figured we're running a little long and I should probably just create a second tutorial where I go into the animation and I really go in and animate some of these individual elements to help bring this map animation to life. Uh, nevertheless, this is still a cool little animation. Um, I like these uh, subtle looks where you don't have a bunch of movement. You can just animate one or two elements and really, you know, bring the map to life. So keep an eye out for that next month. If you haven't already subscribed and hit the notification bell, be sure to do that and then you'll be notified. And let me know what you thought of the tutorial down in the comment section. If you have any tips and tricks on how to texture objects, I feel like my skill set when it comes to texturing is um, still pretty lacking. So let me know if you have any tips like what blend modes you like or how you texture objects. That would be very cool. And don't forget to go check out Envato Elements. You saw how many cool assets there are available on the site. So check out the link down in the video description.